So today we're going to look at our um, Unit 1, Theme A, River Environments case study, looking at river management strategies. Our case study is going to be the Mississippi River. Um, the spe specification asks you to investigate one case study of a river outside the British Isles and evaluate river management strategies used referring to principles of sustainable development. Key areas in this, uh, outside the British Isles, so it is not your Somerset case study. Um, evaluates, we must have positives and negatives. Um, we must look at our strategies and we then have to refer to the principles of sustainable development, which we'll come back to later. Um, just to introduce our location, you can see here Mississippi in the context of North America. The Mississippi is obviously a huge river and it flows through 10 states through North America. Uh, it also drains, its drainage basin covers one third of the country. Um, you can see in this picture here a bit more clearly uh, the massive amount of tributaries, uh, for example the Ohio over here and the Missouri over here, which we'll talk about later, and are massive rivers in their own right. Obviously a river of this size, um, with this much impact in so many states, requires a lot of management, to, particularly when the river is prone to flooding. Uh, when it flooded in 2011, 25,000 people had to be evacuated and property damage cost an estimated three billion. So with this in mind, the strategies and responses to flooding are absolutely vital. We're going to look at two key areas, hard and soft engineering strategies and look at the sustainability of each in turn. The first hard strategy that we're going to consider are levees. Now levees are a natural part of the river system and come about when the, rif the river floods on the floodplain and the heaviest material is deposited first, uh, leaving a built up bank along the side of the river. Man-made levees are then added to this uh, to increase the height and to enclose the river channel. In the case of the Mississippi, this was done for almost 3,000 kilometres of the river and the levees are raised to 15 metres higher than the water level. The next hard engineering strategy that we'll consider is straightening the river channel, you can see here. Uh, within the Mississippi, this was done for over 1,750 kilometres, created a fast flowing straight river channel. You can see in the pictures to the right here um, how this could happen. The picture on the left has a series of tight meanders picture on the right, these meanders have been cut through and the channel has been straightened through here. Um, this prevents erosion on the outside of the curves and deposition on the inside but at the same time creates faster river speeds and can lead to problems further downstream. The final hard engineering point is the use of dams. Um, dams can be positive as they can generate hydroelectricity, however they can also be negatives if um, reservoirs lose a lot of water from evaporation or if there is habitat destruction in the creation of the dams. So the next area to consider then are our soft engineering strategies and you can see some examples here. Um, three main examples for our soft strategies. You can see a forest station, you will have heard of that before. Um, planting trees to increase rates of interception and increase uptake through the roots. Uh, our example here is trees being planted in the Tennessee Valley. Um, it also stabilises the soil to prevent erosion <coughs> and prevent a flash flood as the water reaches the river channel very quickly. The next point is safe flood zones. Um, building is restricted in some flood affected areas. Uh, our example here is an area called Rock Islands. The third point then may be a new term, are washlands. Um, in 2011, the Morganza Slipway was opened to flood around 12,000 kilometres of farmland in Louisiana to prevent water from reaching New Orleans. So you've got some good examples there. And basically a washland is an area that can be safely flooded um, without having too much impact on residential areas or uh, farms. Now the key to this case study really is assessing the sustainability of these measures and that's what we're going to look at next. So is the river being managed sustainably? Have a look. Within this you've got, and within your case study booklet, you've got some options. A lot of these options would suggest that the river has not been managed sustainably. If you look at this section here, hard engineering strategies have generally proved unsuccessful. Um, levees cause river banks to rise as the silt has nowhere else to go. This leads to, in some cases, the river banks uh, being lower than the river level itself, up to 4.3 metres uh, in New Orleans. This is obviously very dangerous. If the levee is breached, 
this will lead to very, very serious flooding. Drainage of wetlands and lack of silt are destroying valuable habitats. Uh, no silt because a natural flooding process can't happen if the river is enclosed by levees. We can see on this slide some ideas uh, with reference to soft engineering strategies. In some cases, soft have not been proven sustainable either. Afforestation takes too long to apply. Um, and despite attempts at afforestation in some areas, there are still um, residential areas being built in other places. For example, you can see the St. Louis example here. Uh, the use of washlands should be an emergency measure. The 2011 flood showed a lack of these washlands, and the Army Corps of Engineers had to explode a Birds Point levee um, to, create a, to create a washland. This ruined dozens of farmsteads. Because this question is an evaluate style question potentially, it's important as well as finding the negatives and the unsustainable areas to try and find something uh, to use as a positive or an aspect that could be considered sustainable. So if you look at the bottom point here, it's been highlighted uh, in green. US research has estimated that restoring 13 million hectares of wetlands would have cost 2 to 3 billion. This would be approximately the same as the amount of damage that was caused in the 2011 flood but could have saved on the need for response for homelessness and so on, and obviously avoided the distress. So you could refer to this wetlands point to give your answer some balance. So if you are evaluating, you've got something positive to say, rather than just all the negative aspects that were not sustainable. We will move on now to have a look at a past paper question over here. So our sample question here asks us to Evaluate the sustainability of the management strategy of a river outside of the UK, which you have studied. So key points here. Evaluate, we need positives and negatives. The sustainability of the strategies and outside of the UK. So make sure you do not do summer sets. Um, we're going to break this into four key areas. Our introduction, examples of hard engineering strategies and are they sustainable? Examples of soft engineering strategies and are they sustainable? And then your conclusion. So introduction, keep it fairly brief, include two or three facts and figures if possible, and mention your question word early on. So talk about sustainability, uh, you could say I'm going to evaluate to also mention your evaluate question word. Primarily make sure you state your case study name early on, if you don't you will be limited to level one. Hard engineering strategies then, um, state your strategy you could include a couple of facts and figures about that strategy. For example, if we look at our levees, you can mention that there are 3,000 kilometres of the levees um, along Mississippi. And then we refer back to the sustainability aspect. They have not proven to be sustainable. Flash floods can occur. An example of place names and figures. Soft engineering strategy then. Afforestation. Again, you could include um, the example of the Tennessee Valley explain what the afforestation strategy is aiming to do. Um, the problem then is it has not proved sustainable, it's not been used widely enough and takes too long for the trees to become large enough. The use of washlands can potentially be sustainable, but there's a lack of them and it shows in the 2011 flood. So we're looking at two points here that have fairly unsustainable outcomes. And then if we include one that has a slightly more sustainable outlook, that gives the answer a little bit of balance. The last bit then, the bit that is important not to forget, is to give your own opinion of the conclusion. Um, your opinion here will probably be negative in the sense that it's not being managed sustainably at this time, and you could then potentially suggest a way to improve that. 